In Russia, he pledged $100 million to help scientists who might otherwise have sold their expertise to bidders like Iran or Iraq. In Eastern Europe, he's educated a new generation. And in Ukraine, he spent millions retraining the old Soviet military. At the center of George Soros, there's an inherent contradiction. Which is? Which is, on one hand, uh, you're, the, you're the capitalist who does not care about the social consequences of his act. And on the other hand, you are a philanthropist who cares only about social consequences. How do you resolve the two? Recognizing that, that uh, as, a, as a competitor, I've got to compete to win. As a human being, I, can, I, I am concerned about the society in which I live. Which George Soros am I talking to now, the amoral George Soros or the, the moral George Soros? Uh, it's one person. It's one person who at one time engages in amoral activities and at the rest of the time tries to be moral. To understand the complexities and contradictions in his personality, you have to go back to the very beginning, to Budapest, where George Soros was born 68 years ago to parents who were wealthy, well-educated, and Jewish. When the Nazis occupied Budapest in 1944, George Soros's father was a successful lawyer. He lived on an island in the Danube and liked to commute to work in a rowboat. But knowing there were problems ahead for the Jews, he decided to split his family up. He bought them forged papers, and he bribed a government official to take 14-year-old George Soros in and swear that he was his Christian godson. But survival carried a heavy price tag. While hundreds of thousands of Hungarian Jews were being shipped off to the death camps, George Soros accompanied his phony godfather on his appointed rounds, confiscating property from the Jews. These are pictures from 1944 of what happened to George Soros's friends and neighbors. You're a Hungarian Jew mm -hmm. who escaped the Holocaust mm -hmm. by posing as a, a Christian. Right. And... You watched lots of people get shipped off to the death camps. Right. I was 14 years old. And I would say that that's when my character was made. In what way? That one should think ahead, one should understand and, and anticipate events. Uh, and uh, one, one is threatened. It was a tremendous threat of evil. I mean, it was a, a very personal experience of evil. My understanding is, is that you went out with this protector of yours who swore that you were uh, his adopted godson. Yes, yes. Went out, in fact, and helped in the confiscation of property yes. from the Jews. That's right. Yes. I mean, that's, that sounds uh, like an experience that would send lots of people to the psychiatric couch for many, many years. Was it difficult? Uh, uh, not, not, not at all. Not at all. It, uh, maybe as a child, you don't, you don't see the connection, uh, uh, but it was, it created no, no problem at all. No feeling of guilt. No. For example, that uh, I'm Jewish, uh, and here I am watching these people go. I could just as easily be there. I should be there. None of that. Well, uh, of course, I, uh, I could be on the other side, or I could be the one from whom it, the thing is being taken away. Uh, um, but there was no sense that I shouldn't be there, because uh, that was... Uh, uh, well, actually, funny way, it's just like in markets, that if I weren't there, of course I wasn't doing it, but somebody else would, 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 would be taking it away anyhow. You know, it was the, whether I was there or not, I was only a spectator, the property was being taken away. So I had no role in taking away that property. So I had no sense of guilt. Are you religious? No. Do you believe in God? 